Okay, this is the this is a three by three example. I know you've totally fallen in love with matrices by now. It doesn't take long, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's important uh, part of the process, really, and um, you never get over it. So, okay, so I'm going to give you a three by three example of this a x equals b story in these three versions: matrix, the matrix picture, the column picture, and the row picture. So, just starting with the the matrix picture, we have a x equals b. It's a three by three. Right, so that's M, always M rows, N columns, right, in the order of the alphabet. So this is the three here, this is M is here. M is in this direction, and N number of columns goes this way. Trouble with that pen there. So this is always, because of, you know, there's three and three, it, it's not gonna work out, but as an interesting example, but this is always, um, sorry, N by one, and m by 1, right? So they're matrices, vectors, important thing, vectors are matrices, right? So just a three rows, one column in this case, so three by one, and a three by one. So these things always have to match up uh, properly, and that may, what I mean is these pieces have to match up, because we're going to take dot products, so we're going to take the dot product of the first row with this column, there's only one column. We're then going to take the dot product of the second row with the uh, with the single columns here, and then the third row, right. So there are these three multiplications, and that will take us back out to the, the row picture. But before we do that, let me just say, um, I'll write it down again, the matrix picture is about, this matrix A transforms this vector into another one. So you can imagine it rotates it, or stretches it, flips it, and that takes a whole course to figure out how that happens. Exciting, right? The excitement just, just, just never ends. Uh, so you have to kind of pace yourself. All right, so let's do that multiplication. Uh, multiply out uh, in the standard way, right? Row, column, dot products. And so we'll end up with, and I'll space them out, right? So there's a, a 2x1, so there's going to be 2 times x1, 1 times x2, 0 times x3. And we're going to add those things together. So it's 2x1 plus, whoop, plus x2. And then there's 0x3. And I'm just going to leave a space. And all of that has to equal what's over here on that, that entry there. So that's equal to 2. I'm getting better at it. Uh, equals 2. And then we do the next one, right? So um, minus 1 plus x1, 1, x2, 2, x3. And all of that has to equal 2. So let me get rid of those characters. All right, so this is going to be minus x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 equals 2. And then we do the same thing for the, the third row times the, the vector here. So there's a 0 in the first entry, right, so nothing. A 3 times x2, a 1 times x3, doo -doo, and all of this has to equal 6. That is fun. So 3x2 plus x3 has to equal 6. All right, so this is our row picture. This is the simultaneous equations story that you may have seen before. So these, these are equations of, what are these equations of, right? So we're in three dimensions. Think about that, All right? So these are equations in 3D, equations of planes, right? So they're planes in 3D. And if we had a fourth, if we had an x4, they would be hyperplanes in four dimensions, which is to say, which is weird, right? So it's a sphere and bananas. So our brains go pop. That's why we don't want to think about it for intuition. We'll, we'll think about it mechanically for solving, but that's, that's okay. Uh, so we want to find, so this, so the job now is finding where these three planes intersect. And so this is more complicated than the, uh, two lines intersecting each other. Uh, they could be, the planes could all intersect on a line. They could all overlap. One could be parallel to another, or, right? So there could be, again, no solutions, infinitely many solutions, or one solution. Right, so the, the one solution case would be, imagine this is the plane, here's another plane, and then a third plane could be here, right? And so there's just that one point that they hit at. 
So that's pretty cool. If you just chose three arbitrary planes, that, that would work out. Okay, so that's the row picture. Um, so we multiply out in a, a slightly sneakier way. So a little more sneakily. Lots of sneakiness. Right, so we said this before we could take, just say, let's take that column vector, that make this column, make them just three objects. And then we have these pieces here. So it's a big kind of dot product. So this dot product now is x1 times the first vector, x2 times the middle one, and x3 times the, the last one. So that's a big deal for us. Goodness. Okay, so this will be x1. And there'll be a 2, minus 1, 0, and then I can just write them out, or just write out the columns, right? So these are the columns, boom, boom, just spread them out, and then 0, 2, 1, and all of this has to equal 2, 2, and 6, right? plus x2, plus x3, da, da, da. All right, so this is the column picture. This, this seems um, more intuitive to us in general. Uh, so we need to dial the first vector, we need to, so by dial I mean multiply it by some number. Could be negative, could be zero, could be positive, or scale it, make it smaller. And then do that to the second one, to the third one, and add the vectors together to get 226. Now, it's a bit sneaky because, more sneakiness, because of course this is a fabricated problem. You can see something special about this vector and this vector. And they don't, they're, they're different to the other two vectors, right? So they point in the same direction. So in fact, if we take zero of this one, zero of this one here, right? So we could put zero, two, zero, and that would work. Right? So we can just kind of see that. So we can see, this is not how we solve things, right? So we see uh, that the solution is x1, x2, x3. And it's not to say that uh, is zero to zero, right, right. Uh, but you know, it always takes more work. So let's not get carried away. But that was just a nice little one that we could we could. Okay, so we see that from from that uh, solution. And so let's say what these things do, right? So the row picture, um, so we're finding where three planes, uh, I've said it here, I guess, three planes, equations of planes. So we want to find where they intersect. Here it's, uh, this is about um, A transforms X. X into B, right? And we have to find we have to find the x for which a will transform it, right? So we find x such that a transforms x into a b, right? So if a was a rotation matrix, say, that, like to turn everything, we're just in two dimensions, you know, 90 degrees, and you want to get to b, then you know you, you have to go back here 90 degrees, right? So there's an inverse, right? We have to undo it. Undoing matrices is hard, right? We had um, 2x equals 4. Pretty easy to undo that multiplication, right? You just multiply both sides by a half. And we, we could, we might want to do that, right? So in fact, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And, and for large systems, though, it's actually a hard kind of thing to do. And it's, it, it's um, computationally, but it's good for little systems and it's good for theory, this idea of an inverse. Okay, um, so there's, there's that story, right? That we're going to transform it. The equations of plane in 3D, so this is, let me just say some more about that. So row picture, it's the same as what we had for uh, 2D. So we could have, this maybe is a little hard to draw, but uh, one, two, and then say, right, so there's one solution. Could do this. We could have um, parallel ones, right, even if one of them is cutting through the others. Uh, no solution, and we could have something like this, where they all go along one, um, they intersect along one, one line. 
Right, and the intersection is always going to be simple things, lines, planes, whatever it is. They're never going to be circles or anything weird, right? No curves. So this is infinitely many solutions. So that's the same, so this generalizes, right? Uh, and, you know, the column picture, again, we can kind of draw that more simply, right? This, this got a bit ugly with planes. Uh, with the column picture, we can have, uh, right, we're trying to get a, a fourth vector from three vectors. So this could be x1, x2, and x3. And if, if they're um, structured so that you can you know, add them up to get any, any solution, and then let's say B is here, and we, you know, we have to talk about what that means, but for instance, obviously, I, J, K in three dimensions is a I hat, J hat, K hat, right? The unit vectors along the axes, that does that, right? You can get everywhere. And there's only one way to get there. So this is, a, this is one solution, right? They're not, it, it's more complicated, we'll get to it. Um, they're all in sort of different directions, if you like. If you have a couple pointing in, say, the same direction, maybe this is x1 and x2 and x3, so you can get rid of one of them, right? One, this, one of them doesn't matter, right? And say b is out here. So one of these doesn't matter. So there's a redundancy, which can be okay, right? It's good to have some backup violas in the orchestra. Um, but if there's redundancy, then it's possible, so say that you can only reach a plane, right? You can only, you have a vector here, x1, x2, and x3, and if you had lots of combinations of them, linear combinations, you only just map out a plane, and B is pointing up here, you can't make it. So from an orchestra point of view, you can't make that sound, you're missing the instrument. So this is um, uh, potentially, potentially, right? So zero or um, infinitely many solutions. That's going to be a little tricky, right? We could have something like this, x1, x2, x3. They're really just pointing in the wrong way. And then we're sure about it, right? So, so we're, we're definitely sure. So this, 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 there are no solutions here. So zero solutions. This one, it depends on b. It depends on b. This one... Well, it's true that this depends on B too. Okay, all right, fine, yeah. Zero solutions or infinitely many. Yeah, okay. Same thing, they always depend on B. All right, so um, that's good. It's just a little extra example here for a uh, three by three, just to help you kind of move out. And it's why we don't think about the row picture in our heads geometrically for four by fours, right? So this is, uh, this is, what am I trying to say? So this is uh, right, way too hard in uh, 4D and above, unless you have a very special mind. But this, is, this, this picture is, this is easy to generalize, easy in many, di many dimensions. That's always good. Okay, awesome. All right, so that's, that's just a little extra piece. There. Good.